Hello there everyone and welcome back to Tune Talk with Andy. In today's episode we will actually be discussing an album that was requested by one of you guys. I'm not gonna name and shame, but this particular person is a, at least an enjoyer of this particular band. This is a genre that we have not discussed yet, and uh, it's a bit of a different one because the band is Linkin Park and they have ventured into several different uh, genres. But in this particular album, which you will have seen in the title, Meteora, we venture into the genres of rap metal, new metal and alternative metal. And it's a bit of a weird mix, but they were able to make it work for the most part. I have of course listened to some of these songs before because, well, the last song on the album is downright notorious and I think everyone has at least heard that once in their lifetime. But regardless, without further ado, let's get right into the first song. Well, I say song. It's 13 seconds long, it's called Forward, and as I've said before, if it's just like a couple of seconds or a minute or two of an interlude, basically just nothing, more of a transition-esque type B, it gets a 5 out of 10 at the neutral ground. So, forward, 5 out of 10. Let's go. Next up is an actual song which is called Don't Stay. This song actually greatly surprised me when I first heard it with its great opening riff. The vocals are, well, Chester Ben Bennington, who was the... Uh, vocalist at the time, prior to his death, in 2017, I think. Um, he is known for having great vocals, and his distortion, the way he does that, is phenomenal. He is, I would say he's the best at it, at least the best that I've heard. The vocal runs throughout the tune are solid, and it's just a pleasant surprise to open the album. It's not a phenomenal song by any means, but it does the job really well. One thing that I did notice is that the drumming is boring and somewhat lazy, it's just kind of there to maintain the beat. But then again, this isn't the type of genre that I'm used to, so I'm guessing there isn't as much of an emphasis on all the instruments. It's more focused on having the vocal runs, the melodies and all of that in place. But part of what makes a great tune for me is having most instruments have some sort of a prominent role, if that makes any sense. And here on this tune, it doesn't really live up to my personal expectations for what a song should contain. The song gradually progresses into the realm of boredom towards the latter half of the tune, and that's simply because they kind of keep repeating the same thing, and I just wanted to switch up at some point towards the latter half of the tune, but sadly, it just doesn't come to be, and the ending is quite abrupt, so it's a bit of a throw-off, but it's still a decent song overall. I gave it a 7.5 out of 10. Solid overall. Next up, we have the song called Somewhere I Belong. This song actually really blew my expectations. The intro is so intriguing, it really got me so... I, Ah, oh, immediately, man. It was a really good choice of the band to have this kind of spoken word-esque, I guess it's rap kind of uh, intro to the vocals. Like, this spoken word slash rap bit builds into the vocals, and once these vocal hits, it's just it's done so well, so... Uh, the storytelling, man, it's really damn good, and the lyrics are interesting. The ad-libs build on top of the vocals and the rapping really damn well on the song, which is something that really really affects the rating for me. If ad-libs are poor, it drags the rating down. If they're good, it's likely to give it a boost, because ad-libs can either be used as a tool to strengthen the message of a song, or it can be used to just fill emptiness, which will then feel empty, ironically enough, and it will just drag the tune down, because it'll just feel like a cluttered mess, and I'm not here for that. I do wish this tune could have been a bit longer, and it should have switched up the vocal runs a tiny bit more for it to be higher, but I gave it an 8.5 out of 10, so it's a brilliant song. I will definitely be adding this to my playlist. Next up, however, we have a bit of a disappointment, but still an okay song. It's called Lying From You. It has an interesting but really weird opening riff. I'm not quite sure how to explain it, but it doesn't really hit with me. It's not necessarily a bad riff, but it's not something that I would personally choose to listen to. It's I can tell it's definitely a market out there <laughs> that will enjoy that type of riff, but me personally, no. The vocals, as always, Chester absolutely killed it. Phenomenal vocals, and the ending is really good on this song. It does feel like this song is a bit of a filler song though, and it doesn't really have a purpose on this album other than being a filler, and you know, you guys know how I feel about filler songs. They're just there to <laughs> keep the album going, which I personally am not a fan of, you guys know that. The vocal runs, 
despite of the vocals being great, are quite poor here in my opinion. They're really boring, they're nothing appealing, there isn't a clear hook that catches me just like that. And the mixing on this song, I'm not one who knows a lot about mixing, I just know that something in here was off, something was poorly done, and it's just downright weird at times. So I gave this a 6.5 out of 10, still, a, still an okay song, if the album is on. I'll, I won't skip it. I probably won't skip any songs on this album, other than maybe Forward because it's 13 seconds long. What's the point? Next up, however, we have Hit the Floor. And no, this is not the Pitbull and Kesha song. It's Linkin Park, as we all know. The intro is so damn boring. I could not have found a more boring intro on this album, at least. The vocals, however, as always, I'm gonna keep saying this, Chester kills it, his vocals were phenomenal, and the hook overall is quite solid actually, that was quite a surprise, but everything else about the song is just weird and off-putting, the instrumentals are really lazy, they don't build on the song, they don't provide anything that I'm after, and as I talked about the ad-libs before, here in this instance, it's done really poorly, it just doesn't add to the tune at all, in fact, it tarnishes the tune from a 6.5 to a 6. So I gave this a 6 out of 10, of course. Next up, however, is Easier To Run. This song is definitely going towards the right direction on this album. We started strong on the album, then had a bit of a dry streak of two songs. Now we're back somewhat on top, I'd say. And uh, I, I've got to say, the, the intro is really abrupt, but it's intriguing and really interesting. It does get you hooked, but in a weird way, if that makes sense. There is a good balance between the spoken word slash rap bit and the vocal distortion, which really builds on this tune, and I feel like this is Linkin Park done extremely well. The mixing of the rap and the distortion on top of that, and those two playing off each other, is kind of reminiscent of how, say, Mika Lorkefeld does his growls versus his clear vocals, as in two polar opposites intertwine and they just make this phenomenal song. Now I'm not here to compare two greats, vocally speaking, because very different styles and not not similar in that regard, but it's more the fact that there's two different things working well together and the same thing, but on, an, on another spectrum. So I'm not sure if I worded that right, but that's how I feel about it. The instrumentals on this song are solid, they do the job well, but they're nothing phenomenal, nothing special. Nothing that gets me hooked personally, but it's like this, yeah, okay, I can bop, I can somewhat bop my head to this. But again, nothing special. There is a decent build-up towards the latter half of the tune, but it's still not quite on par with what I would expect from Linkin Park, especially considering the two previously mentioned songs, Don't Stay and Somewhere I Belong. This song fall, falls kind of short of that, but then again, it's not as bad as Lying From You and Hit The Floor. I gave this a 7 out of 10. The hook is just boring, and the lyrics are just not it for me personally. But next up, we have, I'd say, the second best song on the album, Faint. Before I get into my notes and stuff, I gave this a 9 out of 10. It's, it really surprised me. I thought the only great song on this album would be Numb, because that's the only, only song I had heard before. But yeah, this really blew me out of the water, man. It has this strong and intriguing intro that really gets you hooked immediately. The opening riff is phenomenal. It's really strong. And the vocal structure throughout the tune is so well written. And it's so well executed as well. Chester Bennington, I'm guessing he wrote it because he's the vocalist. I might be wrong though, do not quote me on that. But th it's, this has been done really well. This is exactly how I want Linkin Park to sound. The lyrics are a bit mediocre, but thankfully the vocals sort of make up for it. But I do wish the song was longer because this has such potential. And um, yeah, I mean, the longest song on the album is like three and a half minutes, which isn't a lot to go on. But I mean, it's still a phenomenal song. Nine out of ten, we take those. Next up, we have Figure.09, or 09. Weird name, feels like the type of name a prog band would name their song, but this is far from that. Yeah, it has a good opening riff and solid lyricism throughout. The build-up to the hook is actually really surprising. It's great, and the hook is strong. So when you have a great build-up to a strong hook, it really just sets the tone immediately, and it will. I'll, I'll go as far as to say it's basically the recipe for success. However, the instrumentals could vary a bit more because, again, it's kind of just this copy-paste type thing, which I'm not a big fan of. I do have to say the ending is a bit interesting, and um, 
I'm not sure whether it's in a good or a bad way just yet. So it doesn't affect the rating at all. But I did give this a 7 out of 10. It's just the replayability factor for me. It's a bit a bit too iffy in certain places for me to fully appreciate it in its glory, I suppose. But yeah, I feel like it has potential, but something seems a bit off for me personally. Next up, we have Breaking the Habit. Right, this sounds like a struggle with addiction. Um, It has this fun intro, ironically enough, which leads to a strong build-up towards the hook. The lyricism is quite decent, I'd say, and uh, the vocal melodies are well composed. They're really well composed, and uh, it's definitely the thing that's carrying this tune for me personally. Again, the instrumentals are nothing too special, nothing I'd listen to in my spare time, and uh, the mixing at times is really questionable, especially towards the meat of the song. And man, the instrumentals, they're so goofy, man. Goofy are instrumentals. It's <laughs> Not always bad, but just not ideal for the most part. But I gave it a 7.5 out of 10. It's still a song I'd listen to on the album, not off it, but yeah, on it. Next up, however, we do have quite a good song. From the inside, I gave this an 8 out of 10. Firstly, because of the solid intro, it really gets you hooked immediately. And there is this great build-up up until the hook's first introduction. And I do have to say, it's well done. And as always... The vocals are great. Chester Bennington, he knows what he's doing. The riff is also, finally, a good one. We have had two other good riffs, maybe three, but this one is definitely a standout alongside the uh, first song. By first song, I do not mean forward, I mean don't stay. Because forward cannot be classified as a song. It's 13 seconds long, for God's sake. Um, but yeah, I do wish the song could have been a bit longer to properly convey its message because I feel like there's something there that could could have been, I don't know, executed slightly better if they just had more time to work with. And uh, yeah, the ending, man. It's part of why it needs to be a bit longer, because the ending is a bit too abrupt, and it needs a bit of work. Next up, we have Nobody's Listening. Well, nobody will be listening to this song, am I right? <laughs> it's an okay song, nothing special. I gave it a 6.5 out of 10. It has a great and intriguing hip-hop-esque opening, which really just stood out. I'm guessing this is where rap metal comes into play. And uh, yeah, the, the rapping was actually surprisingly good, and it had a decent flow overall. Could have been improved in certain instances, but overall it was done fairly well. There is a great transition into the distorted vocals, which is something that, as I said previously, it's really important, especially when you get into these distorted vocals or growls or screeching, any of that. You need a good build-up in order for it to fully work, in my opinion. The instrumentals are a bit iffy, but the choice of introducing the flute was really smart and really unique. That is something that I definitely gave as a plus for this song. Something about this song in its entirety, however, just that was really off-putting. Like, something about it works really well, yet it also works so poorly, and I'm not sure how to explain it. It's just this weird mess, but it still kinda works, I guess? But yeah, again, I gave it a 6.5 out of 10. I wouldn't put this on outside of the album, but, you know, I won't skip it. Next up! Next up, we have Session. This is... Uh, I'm just gonna put it like this. I was really disappointed hearing that... There was another interloop type thing there. Two and a half minutes, roughly, of just nothing. <laughs> Basically nothing, just a copy-paste beat. And uh, I don't feel like that works. I think they were trying to, like, build up to this epic ending with Numb, but it just didn't work for me personally. But then again, all interloops are just placed in the same category because it's just an interloop, man. It's not a song. I gave it a 5 out of 10, of course. Um, but I did actually write a note for this, as opposed to what I've usually done on the other ones. I, It's just this poor structured mess with an obscenely weird choice in the mixing department. It's just, something's just wrong. I don't get why they chose to do that. But then again, some people might like it. Some people might use it as a toilet break if they're putting it on their LP. Vinyl, vinyl, not sure how to pronounce that. But to conclude the album, one of the best songs to end an album, period. It's numb. This song is just iconic. Most most people have heard it at some point in their time. This, this song was one of the staples of the early 2000s. And man, this 
it's time to cook, boys. Right, so first of all, this was one of my favorite songs growing up. Well, I said growing up. I'd say from like 8th grade to maybe I was 16, 17, somewhere around that mark. But yeah, the intro to this song is so iconic, man. As soon as you hear it, you're just, you're just creaming your pants. I can't lie. It's that good. The instrumentals are so great and it really elevates the tune's greatness in such a phenomenal way. The lyricism is great and it's actually and thrilling. It really is. Fantastic vocals overall with great backing vocals, which again is a huge plus. It has great song composition and <coughs> yeah, great song composition, both vocally and instrumentally speaking. And it's really well mixed. This song is just the staple of my teens, I'd say, it's really damn good. This is a song that, right, you know if you're sat in a car, yeah, and you hear a song, you stare out the window and you just imagine something, whether it's something epic happening or just a scenario, and you have this song that you just automatically put on in your head, you know all the lyrics, you know how you would perform it if you sang it and wrote it. This is one of those songs for me, and it's just so freaking phenomenal. The ending is great, the only downside to this song is that I wish it was a bit longer. If this was 5 minutes long, it would be ideal, but it's... Let me fact check this. It's 3 minutes 9 seconds. Yeah, I wish it was just a tiny bit longer, because it's such a phenomenal song. Then again, you never know, longer is not always better, we all know this. But I feel like it potentially could have been good here. But this, as you probably may have guessed, is my favorite song of this album, and I gave it a 9.5 out of 10. So close to a 10. It's just that I wish it was a tiny bit longer, but sadly it wasn't to be. Now, if we add every single score together, we get a grand total of 7.5, nearly exactly. It was like 7.5454545545, but of course, we stop at the first digit, so it's a 7.5. And I've got to say, I feel like that's an appropriate rating. It's a good album. But there are a few songs that are just a bit... Eh. Okay. Fine. I get it. I get it. Fine. Not for me personally, but it does have some bangers on it. I would say that this album was an enjoyable listen. My first time ever listening to this album was actually today, as I'm recording this, on uh, the 7th of November. <laughs> and... Uh, I don't know what took me so long, because I love Numb, I always have. I think I may have been scared of the disappointment that it might not have been as good as I would have hoped, but this wasn't a letdown at all. This was actually a satisfactory album to go through, and I would highly recommend anyone to check it out if they haven't already, though I do think most people will have at least gone through some of the songs. But that will be it for now, thank you all so much for watching this episode of Tune Talk with Andy, I greatly appreciate you guys dropping by, and goodbye.